press the like button. Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, this is the summary for the day of 678 for the... What did I press? Oh, 2nd of January. I press, I, 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 pr I typo, I put 0. So there's no 0 of January. No, you are not in a simulation. So, um, yeah. So uh, in the southern front, over at the Kherson front, uh, we have uh, continued uh, beach hit by the Ukrainians. Uh, over at Krinky, uh, wrong color. Uh, over at Krinky, uh, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry, the Russians are still attacking Krinky, uh, but totally is ignored by uh, everyone else. Uh, only the Ukrainian Defense Ministry is talking about this. And uh, there is some joke location uh, on the northern bank of the Dnipro River with military summary. Uh, uh, Joe located a Lancet attacking uh, some artillery system of the Ukrainians. Uh, further up north from Tehinka and uh, further nearer is yet another Lancet attack which means that the Russians are now using Lancets to uh, hunt uh, all the Ukrainian assets around this region they are flying all over the place to look for targets to hit and uh, this is going to be quite uh, bad for the Ukrainian forces if the Russians are able to you know, wind down uh, all these uh, Ukrainian uh, equipments as uh, particularly uh, air defense and uh, artillery system, then without a uh, sufficient uh, counter artillery support, uh, no counter battery support or uh, air defense support, uh, then the soldiers over at Krinky is going to die even faster. Uh, over at this Zaporizhia front, this is Zaporizhia. At the Zaporizhia front, uh, the Russian forces continue their uh, counter offensive over in this region, uh, fighting reported at Robotine in the western part of Robove mode. Actually, it's more like uh, the direction is actually more like you know this way up and then there's a fighting report at verbal way ukrainian defense ministry claimed that they have some success over towards in the direction of verbal way according to the ukrainian defense ministry they say that their troops advance forcing the russians to abandon some positions so uh you rarely will see the ukrainian defense ministry coming up with something so uh bullish you no know, so so positive so that is interesting that the Ukrainians are doing something like that. So, and uh, the Russian Defense Ministry also reported that the uh, the Ukrainians attack in the northern part of Novo Prokopivka. So, in in this sense, that while the Russians are still doing their usual offensive in a very uh, uh stable, uh, uh methodical, systematic, uh, systematic uh movements, uh slow progress up. The Ukrainians actually some kind of launched some kind of major uh, offensive towards uh, Verbove and uh, towards Novo Prokopivka. So, which is probably why uh, they are a bit proud about it. So, we shall see whether this uh, comes into uh, any uh, significant developments or not. Uh, but of course, this salient has been around for some time already. Uh, so, you know, I don't expect too much changes. Uh, there is geolocation in the northern part of Merne, according or uh, just western part of Nesteryanka. The military summary joe located uh the ukrainian forces getting uh strike uh in their defensive positions around uh, this western part of nesteryanka so otherwise uh i'm not sure if this will be a precedence for any kind of uh, offensive operations by the russians to hit towards the western part of Orkiv, but i don't think so uh, tentatively I, I i don't have much faith in the russians to you know conduct any aggressive uh actions uh Moving on, uh, over at the Velikan Dovosilka sector of the Zaporizhia front, um, the Russian forces attack, uh, continue their attack in uh, Uruzaini. Let me zoom in a bit. Uh, continue their attack at Uruzaini as well as they started their attack over at Staro Mayoski. Uh, information coming from the Russian Defense Ministry. So uh, interesting to see you know, that uh, this attack have again started again over at Staro Mayoski. Uh, but so far, no other further information to suggest how well they are doing. Uh, Creamy Capris did Joe locate the FPV drone hitting a Humvee uh, over at this position. So there is definitely some kind of some kind of action uh, grinding down the Ukrainian forces that is currently defending this uh, this twin town, uh, twin town of uh, Stadio Mayoske and uh, Uruzaini. So yeah, nice boobs. Uh, moving on to, uh, over at the Donetsk. Uh, Donetsk uh, front at the Donetsk front there is fighting reported continuing over at the Novo Mihailivka region but the there is no in my opinion I don't think there's much assault that is currently ha currently happening uh, although the Russian defense ministry said that they are their units are supported by airstrike and artillery hitting Ukrainian uh, air assault brigade and the territorial defense 
and over Mihailivka, but uh, uh, they did also repeated the information about the that was reported yesterday about recon group getting neutralized near Novo Mihailivka. So Russians are probably still conducting some form of attack, but I think mostly it's going to be uh, positional. Uh, I don't think they are con conducting major assaults after you know the failure to penetrate into Novo Mihailivka. The Ukrainians did very well into in terms of defending, but it doesn't mean that the Ukrainians are having the life easy. As we can see, see from our certain geo locations, drone hitting Ukrainian defensive position on the, uh, on the eastern part of Novo Mihailivka, and uh, even the roads are not safe. According to military summaries, geo location, a pickup truck was hit by a Russian drone as well. So even Ukrainian forces are that is uh, moving up and down, you know, these roads from Boyeda to Konstantinivka, um, it is actually very dangerous. So resupply along the road, uh, they can be targets. You know, the Russians are. Uh, zone of operation uh, into this uh ukrainian backline is getting uh deeper and deeper especially with lancers as we can see there's a lot of geolocation location of lancers and sbv and fbv drones are hitting ukrainian forces over at marinka region uh the fighting is now uh moving into hiogivka uh, or hiogivka or hiogivka uh, uh the fighting is being reported by the russian defense ministry about them at attacking or hitting some uh Ukrainian forces in this area here. It could be also coming from the north. So uh, we do not have much details about this. We shall continue to wait and see how this goes. So we move on over at the ADFK front. This is the ADFK front. At the ADFK front, the U Russian forces continue their ADFK offensive, fighting reported in the area of Novo Bakhmutivka towards Vidaichi. Uh, in the ADFK region uh, at Povomaiske and Nevelsky. There is not much details about this area uh except uh over in this uh, northern area uh the ukrainians did not mention east of uh novo bamutivka uh they just say near novo bamutivka i wonder if there is any progression by the russians uh in this area here um and uh the fighting reported towards Vedaichi is by the ukrainian defense ministry which corroborates uh deep state ua and dpa's uh analysis that the russians are actually you know bypassing stepovay to hit from a northern flank, uh, flanking movement towards Bedaichi instead of hitting going uh hit, instead of going through Stepovay, which the Ukrainians currently are defending really well, and the Russians cannot break through in this area here. So the Russians are uh taking advantage of this push towards uh Novo Bamutivka and Orichitine uh by you no know, continuing the attack in the area of Bedaichi in the north northeastern part. So we shall see how this goes. We move on. To uh, away from the ADFK front, uh, there is nothing uh, being reported at the New York front into the Bakhmut front. At the Bakhmut front, Russian forces in the southern flank continue their attack in the area of Kodyomivka, Andriyevka, and uh, Klishyevka. So, uh, no much details. This is just a strategic situation over this area here. Uh, Joe location of Ukrainian forces along the railway lines, uh, three lines, uh, attacked by drones by the Russians, shows that the Ukrainians continue to hold a defensive position at this area here um showing that the, the ukrainians are still uh in this area uh as previously by criminal capris show the uh geo location of russian forces so this this actually give us a good front line at this point this is the front line so that is a good uh these two is a good combination of geo locations uh helping us to establish where the front line is so our front line is actually accurate tentatively we move on to, uh over in the northern flank, Russian forces are continuing their attack towards uh, Ivanivsky. Uh, this is ongoing. Ukrainian forces counter attack at Kromove, report by the Russian Defense Ministry. They say that they repelled an attack close to Atyomovskoye, which is actually Kromove. Uh, there is a geo location uh, by military summary showing the Russians advancing in the southern part or south southeastern part of uh, Bodanivka. So uh, the Russian forces, uh, this is the this this geo location is actually a geo location on the front location of front line and uh they they actually uh land troops using a bmp or a ML mtlb uh i i can't remember which vehicle so the which means that the russians are actually making this advance in this area here fighting generally is being reported at Berdanivka. it might be suggesting about this area here according to the ukrainian defense ministry and the russian defense ministry so it, they could be referring to this attack in this area here uh, but however, we do have a geolocation in the northern part of Bodanivka. This tree line, previously the Russians have captured it, then the Ukrainians 
recapture it, the Russians recapture it, the Ukrainians recapture it, and uh, in the latest information, the Russians recaptured again, uh, wrong color, recaptured this tree line again. So uh, these exchanges in this in this tree, tree line is very very interesting. So um, so uh, we shall continue to monitor and see whether this the Ukrainians will retake the tree line of, again uh, in this northern part of Berdanivka. So if you look at this, then there is this kind of a flanking uh, do pincer movement around Berdanivka. And there could be a possibility that the Russians do not want to penetrate through the center, through the urban area. They could actually uh, decide to actually just go down and uh, and then they actually close the pincer, causing a uh, causing a, a encirclement of the Ukrainian forces within Berdanivka. And then they can actually bombard it and uh, clear it out. And then they actually then will do this push to clean up the town. This could be a possibility. But of course, the Ukrainians will not let it happen so easily. Uh, the Ukrainian forces definitely have a lot of forces along all these three lines and they can actually conduct counter-attack uh, in this area here. And uh, they can definitely you know, even flank the Russians on their, uh, using their own strategy against them. So it's not a, a foregone conclusion. As, as I always say, the arrows may take weeks to develop. So you no, know, they take my arrows with a massive pinch of uh, salt. You no. Know, or MSG. Uh, that's that's all from the uh, Bakhmut front. We move on uh, over the Sivas front. Uh, this is Sivas. Uh, at the Sivas front, we have fighting reported at the Bilohorivka region with the Russians continuing their attack at Bilohorivka. Uh, continuation of the attack on the 1st uh, of January. And uh, Russian and Ukrainian Defense Ministry both mentioned about this attack at Bilohorivka. I'm not sure where the angle of attack is. Is it coming from the southeast or is it coming from the north? Uh, it could be both. It could be one of them. We are not sure. So we shall continue to wait and see uh, if, we, if we have a dual location or any other information to uh, let us know what is the reality. At the Crimea front, the Russian forces launched major offensive in this area here. Um, over the past day, fighting reported at Serebransky Forestry in the Dibrova region towards Toske and uh, in the eastern part of Terni. And the Ukrainian forces did counter-attack at Terni according to the Russian Defense Ministry. Um, what is significant, however, uh, in this front line is not this offensive, although to me this is more important uh, to, to know who is actually attacking uh, or doing assault. But there is a joke location of uh, a Leopard 2 tank getting uh, hit and destroyed by a Lancet and other drones uh, on the western part of Terni. So this is Terni, and uh, at this location, a Ukrainian Leopard 2 tank was hit. Um, it could be already abandoned uh, when the the, when the Lancet drone is hitting it. So uh, this is actually uh, being uh, pro uh, celebrated over on the, on the Russian Defense Ministry's uh, Telegram channel. So that's all for this. Uh, further up north, uh, just off Makievka in the southeastern part of Makievka, we have geolocation location of Ukrainian, uh, Russian forces at this position. This actually helps us uh, improve the uh, change the front line as the previous line was actually here. Uh, so now the, now the front line have changed to in this area due to this geolocation so we, we which means that the russians actually have made some progress over the past few days that we do not know when and uh so this is this happened so this this is where the geolocation is so russians con russia continue to make progress on the western part of Ploschanka, a, a name that we haven't heard for a long time um so uh, if we look at the previous data the previous fighting reported at Makievka was on the 30th to 31st. Uh, so, which means that the, the fighting, uh, the, the capture of this area here could be on the 30th or 31st. Uh, so, this is probably where the the, pro, the fighting was actually happening. So, uh, we move on. Over at the Stratove front, we have a geolocation location of Russian forces on the east, western part of uh, Kamazinevka. Uh, this is a Russian, Russian position. Uh, hit hit by uh, Ukrainian drones. Uh, this is actually geolocated by, by Crimea Capris. Uh, so this doesn't change the front line. The, this front line is already established previously. And then we move on over to the Kupians front. Uh, this is the Kupians front. At the Kupians front, uh, fighting over on the eastern part of the front line has uh, stopped again. This time around, the fighting is focused mainly on Sinkivka and uh, the eastern part of, or northeastern part of Petropolivka. Uh, did I put wrong or oh, actually it's eastern part so actually the attack is actually coming from here so i actually put wrong uh i will update the map accordingly 
I will change the I will amend it. So the fighting is actually at Sinkivka and uh, eastern part of Petropolivka with Ukrainian forces continuing continuing their clash with the Russians over in the Sinkivka region. Otherwise, there is no changes in terms of this uh Kupian's front situation. Uh, like I mentioned in the previous video, uh, this is probably a positional uh war region uh in this region here, just to uh waste. Uh, Ukrainian resources. Uh, over at the Kharkiv front, uh, at the Kharkiv front, there is a dual location of uh, Russian artillery hitting Ukrainian forces over at uh, Veterinarne. So uh, this is a border town uh, and uh, there is reports of Russian uh, shelling in this area here hitting Ukrainian forces. So is there a crossing here? Uh, yeah, there's an illegal one. So that's all for, for the Kharkiv front and this is the summary. And uh, do remember to press the subscribe button if you haven't pressed the like button uh, as I mentioned in the first word, first sentence in the video, uh, do press the like button. And of course, thank you for watching, uh, do, su do support us. Uh, if you want to support my work uh, and uh, give, give me a peace of mind uh, from uh, the fluctuation of what YouTube uh, is, you can support me on Patreon, Boosty, uh, Locals as well as YouTube membership and coffee so uh you you can actually check out the description below on how you can support me directly and i'll see you guys in the next update